Away among the rolling hills and fertile valleys of the lovely Cotswold country, the carefree wanderer will chance across many a delightful stream or gently flowing river, which, if he is tempted to follow, will lead him through peaceful sunlit meadows, past tranquil old world villages, with many a glimpse of tiny cottage or noble mansion set in the most intimate beauty of this romantic countryside. But most famous and delightful of all such streams and rivers is the lovely Windrush. Here it flows crystal clear between its verdant banks, sparkling beneath the old stone bridge at lower swell with its sleepy cottages and lazily smoking chimneys. Then out again across the meadows and down to the village of Lower Slaughter. Here amidst a scene of exquisite rural charm, it glides smoothly down the centre of the village in place of the high street as it were, and is crossed at intervals by precariously slender bridges. Of course, they are considered far too unsafe for the village children, who never dream of using them. This is not surprising, for the Windrush is literally on their doorsteps, and forms a delightful and essential part of the life of the village itself. You may have noticed by now that most of the Cotswold towns and villages have the most picturesque compound names. Thus we pass down the valley, by way of this attractive Elizabethan manor house, from Lower Slaughter to Upper Slaughter. Upper Slaughter is a pleasant haven of beauty and contentment, bright with the happy laughter of children at play on the banks of the Windrush. A hay wagon puts in a brief appearance, while tired with honest toil, a farmhand slowly drives his horses homeward. But the gentle Windrush beckons us away. Reluctantly, we turn aside from this perfect Cotswold village and in striking contrast to the humble charm and simplicity we have just left, we shortly discover the imposing dignity of a lovely old priory near the neighbouring village of Oddington. Believed to have been built originally by a prioress during the reign of Henry VIII, Studley Priory is a fine example of the remote Cotswold manor houses are so much in harmony with the general Cotswold scene. This is because the majority, like Studley Priory itself, were designed as a replica of the average Cotswold cottage, though on a larger and more ambitious scale. Here there is no striving for mere effect, no discordant note of undue opulence, but perfect symmetry with strength and dignity of line. Old Cotswold houses like Studley Priory were fashioned out of local Cotswold stone by master builders, and their construction and design have never been surpassed. Nor does their ample solidity detract from their extremely picturesque aspect as witness the old creeper-covered stable building with its ancient mullioned windows and steeple bell. Or again, this delightful view of the old kitchen court. Here is seen one of the most attractive quarters of the house with tall, tapering chimneys. There is no mistaking that combination of quality and durability which is the hallmark of all Cotswold mansions. Unlike the stream at Lower Slaughter, the Windrush at Bottom runs parallel with the main street and is spanned at intervals by graceful low-built bridges which connect the main street and its houses on the one side to the houses on the far side of the water. But here, any similarity to the real Venice must come to an abrupt end, for in Bottom there is no maze of stagnant backwaters, but a single crystal stream gliding gently between broad, grassy plots from which are seen some of the most delightful houses in the Cotswolds. Here is the small town itself, with its excellent shops and broad main street, and pervading all an atmosphere of friendliness and warmth, which is a constant delight to the stranger. Away once more through verdant meadows, now thick with reed and flowering rush, or dusted with silver water weed, this tranquil stream glitters gaily in the sunlight. Eastward from Borton on the Water, Across the rolling hillside, past valley, field and woodland, through scenes of matchless beauty, we approach at last the village of Islip. Here we discover the old Elizabethan manor house of Water Eaton. Built entirely of the now familiar Cotswold stone in the year 1585, this ancient manor house has changed but little since those far off times. The main entrance is impressive but by no means overpowering, despite the dignity of its moss-encrusted gate piers. 
The house itself has an air of charm and completeness which is unique among Cotswold manor houses, many of which are surrounded by an array of outhouses attached in casual fashion with the passage of the years by successive tenants. Water Eaton is a dignified exception, displaying a bold and distinctive character as it rises from its thickly wooded background, dominating the scene from high above its creeper-covered walls. Continuing our journey to the west and crossing over the border into Gloucestershire for a moment, we are attracted with a natural curiosity towards the famous old Tudor castle of Thornbury. This enormous edifice, although magnificent, is little in comparison to what it was intended to be. Instead of the one great tower, at least four similar towers were planned, but man proposes, God disposes, and the other three were never even started. One occupant with a passion for light did succeed, however, in completing this colossal bay window, but history proved too much for the remainder of Thornbury's architectural plans. For many of the old castle's owners met violent deaths and never managed to finish anything they started. These magnificent chimney shafts were built by Henry VIII's close friend, the Duke of Buckingham, in the early 16th century, but even he fell out of favour with the king and was beheaded before he was able to achieve any further adornment. The gardens at least, however, are particularly beautiful and lie alongside the private church. But even these same gardens no doubt had quite a lot to do with Henry VIII's seizure of Thornbury following the Duke's untimely death in 1521. For Henry could no more resist a well-planned garden than a pretty woman, and it was here he stayed with Anne Boleyn in 1522, almost before the great Duke was settled comfortably in his grave. Not far from Thornbury, but in striking contrast to that majestic, if unfortunate, pile, lies Frampton Court, an 18th century country mansion built in a totally different style. There is an air of romance about Frampton, which is emphasized in this elegant Gothic garden house and the long tree-shadowed waterway. And now, retracing our steps in the direction of Burford, over meadows white with daisies, we go in search once more of the elusive, ever-winding Windrush. And down in the valley at Minster Lovell, we discover those gleaming waters in secretive mood, half concealed by overhanging willows. For here, the Windrush guards the haunted ruins of Minster Lovell Manor House. Legend has it that in 1487, Lord Lovell, the owner, whilst hiding from his enemies, was trapped and died from starvation in a secret chamber of the mansion. 300 years later, his skeleton was discovered, since when the house was abandoned. Almost adjoining the tragic old ruin is Minster Lovell Church, built during the early 15th century, standing aloof and breathing a final benediction on the sorrows and tragedies of human frailty. Slowly, we turn aside and take our leave of the strange and deserted Valley of Whispers, while the tranquil waters of the Windrush linger through lonely and forgotten meadows, lost in memory, and the silence of the Cotswold Hills.